Hey War Goddess Garden, Carrie Star here, and this is the place where we turn pain into growth, power, and beauty like a beloved garden. And today we are talking about the power of being a black sheep as we journey through this time, looking at it through the lens of the Four Agreements, uh, a very powerful, beautiful book by Don Miguel Ruiz. And let's get started. Lesson number one today is be impeccable with your word. From this amazing little book, The Four Agreements, being impeccable with your word will truly transform your journey. Um, being a black sheep in your family or being the outcast in your family. I have personal experience with this and it is possible to turn this pain into something really powerful because there is power in being the black sheep of the family. I have another video out that I released uh, last week that talks about 14 reasons why it is powerful to be the black sheep. I recommend you look at that one. It's very encouraging. And as we journey through this today, I want to start off by reading a little tiny bit from uh, the author. He says, be impeccable with your word. Speak with integrity. Say only what you mean. Avoid using the words to speak against yourself or to gossip about others. Use the power of your words in the direction of truth and love. That is powerful. And we're going to go over today four reasons why it's powerful and how you can use this painful place to cultivate growth in your life. If you are new here to Worry Goddess Garden, welcome. I would love for you to subscribe. And if you do, let me know in the comments so I may personally um, welcome you to the group. And uh, feel free to like and share this video far and wide. So being impeccable with our word is a really powerful place to start. And the first reason why is because words are manifestations. They have the power to either build a life that we desire or they have the ability to destroy lives. They have the ability to put forth into action things that we do not want to come to pass. So being impeccable with our word when it comes to the power of being a black sheep or an outcast in the family is really important because so much of our interactions with our family is going to be through our words. It will also be action, but a lot of it will be conversations that we have or lack of conversation and maybe something that we need to look at. Maybe we need to have some tough conversations. So the words that you are choosing to use with your family and more importantly with yourself are of utmost importance. So I encourage you to look at your self-talk. How first are you talking to yourself about what's going on in your family and what's going on with possibly the broken relationships that you're dealing with? If you feel as though you are the black sheep or you are the outcast of the family, there's most likely um, deep feelings of rejection, denial, resentment, possibly anger, grief, um, worry. I understand. I really, I really understand what that feels like. And if this is where you're at, I want to encourage you to speak loving truth to first yourself. Speak loving truth to yourself, being impeccable with your word to you, because the way you treat you is going to become your standard, right? The way that you treat yourself will become the standard of what you will require of others. So I encourage you and I really want you to first start treating yourself and your speech to yourself impeccably using the best speech possible, speaking loving truth to yourself, encouraging yourself because we want to, because words are so powerful and they manifest, um, you know, we want to build you up. 
We want to encourage your own heart. We want to, oh, what I keep noticing is like breathe new life into you. That is so important in this painful space. So step two in being impeccable with your word, honoring this power path of being a black sheep through the lens of the four agreements is setting boundaries. And I wrote setting boundaries, not threats with yourself and others. So if you have people in your life, um, family members in your life where your boundaries are not being respected and you'll notice that through a couple ways, one of them most often is through anger. You'll notice anger. Anger is a warning sign saying, Oh, someone's crossing a boundary. This doesn't feel good to me. I feel angry. Anger is usually our, our warn, our warning. So I encourage you, if you're noticing that observe the anger and what comes up from it and what boundary is being crossed. That's the, that's a really important first step with being impeccable with our word is we have to observe our boundaries. Where are they being crossed in our own life, in our hearts? And then where are others crossing the boundary? Because it's important to then speak to that. Being impeccable with our word is honoring where our boundaries are. And we may need to say to a family member, Hey, um, when this happens, this doesn't feel okay to me. Um, it's a boundary of mine that I really desire to honor and I would love to ask you to honor it. So setting boundaries, not threats with our words. And we're doing that first with ourselves. We're honoring our own boundaries and then we're asking family members to honor them as well. I remember, um, too, being impeccable with our word. You know, it's really important to consider the way we are speaking to ourselves first. I remember when I was going through the realization that I was really struggling in my life being the black sheep or being the outcast in my life. And what I noticed so deeply is that the way I was talking to myself was so detrimental. The way that I was choosing to speak to myself on a daily basis, which was rooted in shame and it was rooted in judgment and it was rooted in a lot of fear. When I started to realize that I was doing that to myself and that I had the power to change that, that's when things really started to turn around for me. When I started to realize that I didn't, I no longer gave myself permission to talk to myself that way. And then I certainly wouldn't allow it from anyone else. That was like a pivot point in this impeccable speech that really started the ball rolling in a way that started helping me to love myself even more deeply. So we've set boundaries. We're talking to ourselves with loving truths. And then number three, we honor who our family members are with our speech, but we do not make them the center of our lives. And so it's really easy when we are feeling rejected or when we are feeling like our family has made us the outcast, it's really easy for us to become almost obsessive about thinking of them, about thinking about the problems in our family, about thinking how they don't like me or about how, what could I do to fix this? Or what could I do to make this better? And I find that honoring who they are with my speech. So not gossiping about them and not disrespecting them with my own personal speech, but then also taking the focus off of them and turning the focus onto me and looking at the places in my life where I need to honor myself more which goes back into the boundary setting. So I want to honor myself and put myself first in this situation. It's so important because you're going through something so painful and so difficult. You need to realize that you do not have the power to change them. Your power lies in your impeccable speech 
through your words and actions, and that starts with you. And so I encourage you, rather than making them the center and worrying about them and possibly gossiping about, gossiping about them to your to other friends and that, I encourage you to not do that, to speak of them in an honorable, loving way as best you can, but then to turn the spotlight on you and to make you the center of what's going on and realize where do you need to meet yourself in love? Where do you need to start this journey? What truths and what ways can you speak about yourself impeccably with loving kindness, with open honesty? It's a really powerful place. And number four, speak new truths into existence. So just like we talked about in the first part, words are manifestations. I encourage you to speak new truths into existence. And for you, that might look like, you know, trying on um, some new mantras. I love to look at mantras and meditations on YouTube. This is one of my favorite things when I'm struggling. Um, speaking new truths into existence, writing down a mantra that you look at every day that you possibly, you know, put on your mirror in your bathroom, you put on the um, steering wheel of your car. I even went so far as before work, I was driving professionally. And so before work, I would write up little um, sticky notes of manifestations and truths that I wanted to call into existence. And I would put them on the dashboard of my vehicle I was driving and I would repeat them all day long. Every time I looked at them, I would repeat them and it was really powerful. Um, and also incredibly calming to speak so impeccably to myself calling in something new, manifesting in something new into existence in my life. Because when we're journeying and we're leaving something painful behind, what is so beautiful about that, the power of that space, is that we are forging a new path for ourselves and we are going to speak and manifest something new into existence. And what that might look like is so one manifestation I have written down over on my altar right now at the moment is money flows easily to me. Money flows easily to me. And I look in my mind's eye, it's like a waterfall of money and there is no obstruction. It just comes easily. I don't have to work hard for it. Money just flows easily to me. And this is a manifestation that I'm speaking over and over and over. And it's really beautiful. And I am already thanking God. I'm already thanking the universe for everything that is coming to me. I'm like, oh, I'm so grateful. Money flows easily to me, just like a waterfall. There's no obstruction. Nothing about it is difficult. Money just flows to me. So speaking new truths into existence, that is step four. So being impeccable with your word. This is uh, video number one in a four-part series where we're looking at being the black sheep through the lens of the four agreements. These agreements have changed my life and it started when I was going through really, really tough situations with my family um, and how I grew through that and how that became something powerful in my life and then not only powerful but really beautiful and I want to offer that to you. So if you're new here, welcome. I'd love you to hit the like button and subscribe. And if you do, let me know in the comments. I would love to welcome you personally. And until next time, so love to you.